that new grip in the fingers. Tom, in our first session, I did a complete overview of your putting and your chipping, your pitching, and your full swing. For your full swing, I made a small adjustment in your left hand, placing the hand a little bit more in the finger so you could get the heel of your left hand more on top of the club, which becomes the fulcrum for the leverage of the golf swing. Your tendency right now with the driver is to have a ball flight that goes to the right, um, and we're going to work on that. In order to change that ball flight, we do have to change something in your golf swing, and that change is going to fall into the swing path. We're going to adjust your swing path so it's not out to in, but more in to out. I'm going to introduce some easy drills for you to do that will allow you to feel this new correct in to out swing path. Now let's look at your swing in several key positions. The first position we're going to look at is the impact position. We're going to compare your swing to Grant Waite. He was a tour player in the 90s and recognizes having one of the best swings in golf. The average pro will have 85% of their weight on their left foot at impact. You can see that the red line coming up from Grant's left foot goes right through his belt buckle. Keeping the weight on the left side positions the low point of your swing in the correct position. Impact is occurring in a three-dimensional space. The club head is moving in two ways simultaneously. It is moving up and down, which creates the attack angle. We can either be hitting down or hitting up into the golf ball. And it's either moving in to out or out to in. By properly placing the low point of your swing at impact, you will correctly blend these two movements of the club head. Your weight is behind your left foot, which places your low point too far behind the ball at impact. When your low point is too far behind the ball, it will tend to cause you to swing out to in and cut across it, causing curve to the right. When we look at the left arm at impact, you can see how your elbows are separating and your left arm is bent. Grant has a nice extension in both arms. When your low point is too far back, causing you to swing out to in, that end portion of your arc causes that left elbow to bend. Everything we do prior to impact has one central goal, and that is to arrive at impact in a fundamentally sound position. In the one position, you can see that Grant has a little bit more weight on his front foot uh, than you do. You're kind of hanging back a little bit toward that back leg. Grant has kind of preset himself in a mini, little mini impact position. One of the adjustments I'd like to make is in your setup so that you feel a little bit more centered, a little bit more 50-50, more balanced. Uh, and not too much weight on your back foot. Starting with a little bit more weight on your left side will help you arrive at impact with a little bit more weight on your left side. Here we are in the three position. This is when the left arm is parallel to the ground. You can see how Grant has turned to the right while keeping his left side anchored to that left uh, red line. He's rotating around that left uh, leg and not sliding or leaning to the right. You slide to the right at, uh, with minimal turn to the right. This robs you of power and more importantly moves your golf circle to the right and moves the low point of your swing too far behind the golf ball. I will show you some drills you can do to help you have the proper takeaway where you stay on that left side and rotate uh, more to the inside. Uh, and this will give you more power and make it easier if you hit that little soft draw. You do have a very good extension in your left arm. You hinge your wrist properly, have a nice power angle, the right angle in the left arm and shaft of the club. So you've loaded your hands well here. At the top of the backswing, this is the four position. You have created a good uh, shoulder turn and you've maintained that good power angle. Again, we're just uh, too far to the right side uh, to deliver that power properly into the golf ball. I really like your sixth position. This is when the club is parallel to the ground on the downswing. And you really have a nice power angle there. You've maintained that angle. You haven't really cast too much here with the club. So that's very good. The only difference is where your weight is located uh, at this position. It's still way behind the, the back foot. Your low point is still too far behind the golf ball. Here you are in the eighth position. This is when your hands are about waist high. Uh, the only thing I want to point out is that this is when that left arm is starting to B 
bend, the elbows are separating, Grant has his arms extended. But again, this is uh, more of a product of uh, where your weight shift is. In the ninth position, this is when the right arm is parallel to the ground. You can see how Grant has kept his elbows close to each other right in front of his chest. Uh, his wrists are crossed. The, his left hand, as you can see from the yellow arrow, his left hand is under his right hand. Um, and you have bent your left arm and your white glove is above your right hand. Uh, again, this, uh, some would call this how to release the club uh, properly and uh, have that nice extension. Uh, this will start to look more like Grant's once we work on that weight shift. I really like your final position. Um, you're, you're, uh, you're facing the target. Uh, you have bent that right leg. Uh, you're on the toe of your club. The only difference is where your weight is located. Uh, once we make these other changes prior to impact, then your weight will be more on top of that left foot at the end of the swing. So uh, this is looking very good. I think it's clear as I reviewed each position that the central thing that we need to work on is controlling the low point of your swing, controlling the location of your body center mass, that you start a little bit more on the left side, you learn how to take a back swing and keep your weight more on that left side, and not let your golf circles drift to the right, because that makes it too hard to get back to the correct, correct position. So everything that we're going to do uh, initially is going to be to learn how to swing in a circle and keep our circle stable. Jack Nicholas called this swinging in a barrel. So there's going to be some drills that I'll introduce to you and you'll get this feeling of just rotating and swinging on a circle.